Hey there, creative friends. It's time to throw a little bit of sunshine into your life as we dive into a world of art and reviews. Today we're looking at a pencil which is from one of the oldest colored pencil manufacturers in the world. Known for excellence, quality of product, and currently my go-to pencil for most of my work, direct from Germany, I present to you the Professional Polychromos Pencil by Faber-Castell. Today I'm starting the first of a series of reviews where we're going to be looking at art supplies and flinging a series of tests at them to see what happens. The good, the bad and the ugly, we're going to look at it all. Sometimes these tests are going to be a little bit sciencey and sometimes they're really just the vibe, but I'm gonna do my very best to show you guys how they perform so you can make up your own mind. The first thing we're going to do today is start off by taking a close up look at the pencils themselves. What I have here is Faber-Castell's 120 pencil kit of the Polychromos. This is the largest kit Faber-Castell offers and while it's a little bit of an overkill for these reviews, there is no such thing as too many pencils. It comes in an elegant satin finish tin. Branding wise, it's fairly subtle. From the Gumtree green colouring to the muted gold Faber-Castell logo, the whole thing is very restrained. So much so that the actual branding that says Polychromos is fairly unobvious in the white picture. Opening it up, we have information on the lid in German and English about the history of Faber-Castell and a picture of the Faber-Castell castle itself. Next time I'm in Germany, I'll have to go and check it out. Below, we have a beautiful, vibrant array of pencils. The pencils themselves are held in three deep plastic groove trays stacked on top of each other. They appear to hold the pencils well. There are small elastic handles on the sides to access the trays beneath. The trays are deep and I feel this is one of the more secure boxes I've seen and you could easily store your pencils here. One of the things that often surprises people with such large boxes is that there are no duplicates in color. There are 120 vibrant and very different pencils here to create all the shades of the rainbow that your little heart could possibly desire. I almost forgot that the back of the tin has some really handy color swatches of the pencils inside. On the website for the Polychromos, we can see that they come in multiple sizes and various styles of boxes. From the individual singular pencils to boxes of 12, 24, 36, 60 and up to 120. They offer kits in the same type of tin I have here and for those people who are wanting displays or a more substantial storage solution, they have sets in quite pretty wooden boxes. Faber-Castell is also a great fan of limited edition kits for their pencils, and if you're lucky enough to get one, they can be quite a nice collectible. The pencils themselves are a round barrel pencil. Some people like round, some people like hexagonal pencils. This is all a personal preference. The length of the overall pencil is 175 millimeters or 6.88 inches from tip to tail. And while the diameter is claimed to be eight millimeters, my measurements found them to be slightly under at 7.82 millimeters. The pencil is made of genuine American cedar wood and has a unique oil-based core of 3.8 millimeters or 0.15 inches. Unique because Faber-Castell uses an exclusive resin mixed with the oil core to strengthen the core to keep a sharper point longer. The design of the Polychromos is fairly classic. Stamped in gold font and information imprinted on the pencil give a slight roughness overall, but the pencil itself is quite sleek and smooth. One side of the pencil shows the origin of the pencil, Germany, followed by two small icons separating Polychromos. Further along the pencil is the Faber-Castell logo. Next to the title, Faber-Castell is printed. Further around the pencil, we have a pigment name in both German and English, followed by a star system of one to three, which Polychromos uses to show the pencil's light fastness. On yet a third side of the pencil, we have a mysterious number, followed by a barcode. The pencil is capped off with a gold ring one centimeter from the end as a design factor, which is nice. It also has a smooth shaped end, which is curved. I like this as I'll often nestle that in my hand and it doesn't scratch. Each polychroma shows the color predominantly across the entirety of the pencil, which I like. And visually the lead looks very similar to the indicated color. How accurate the coloring of the pencil is to the actual color it puts down, we'll find out later. So with the Polychromos, I like the shape and the feel of these pencils. The smoothness is comfy in my hand and the rounded ends nestle nicely and gives an overall pleasant finish to the pencils. 
The gold font makes it feel premium and it doesn't distract overly from the colors on the barrel. Speaking of which, I like that the color runs the entire length of the pencil, so I know exactly what color the pencil is as soon as I grab it. This kit has an amazing range of color, but that is really subjective to what you buy because with a 120 pencil set, this is a big kit. I've always previously found that for me personally, a set of 24 or 36 has done what I wanted color wise. But again, that's based on my personal need. The barcode is a recent thing for the polychromos as my older ones don't seem to have them. Instead, they have a sticker barcode that you could remove. I understand why they've gone this way because when you're selling separate pencils, this is likely making things easier. But that said, it does make the pencil feel a little bit less premium. And that is the physical side of our pencils. What we're going to do next is a series of tests. Some scientific, well, as scientific as I can do here in my little studio. Others rely more on the vibe or the feel of the pencils, which is basically my personal opinion. First test up is saturation and vibrancy. Saturation and vibrancy is basically how bright and how saturated the color these pencils can produce. This test basically examines the consistency of these pencils as we go up through different pressure points. On an excellent pencil, we can expect to have obvious steps towards a more vibrant saturation as our pressure becomes heavier and heavier. A lot of factors will contribute to these results, including the hardness of the lead, the composition of the core, but also how vibrant the different colored pigments used in the pencil are. The Polychromos is an oil-based pencil and it tends to be the norm that oil-based pencils have a harder core. That usually makes them the ideal pencil for detail, but it also means that they would traditionally struggle to give a consistent pigment delivery at lighter pressures. But apparently the Faber-Castell's Polychromos core has a mix of some type of resin added to combat that hardness. The idea being to keep a strong core without compromising the pigment saturation and vibrancy. Let's see if the marketing is correct. Because we can't test every pencil in these packs, I'm going to pick four colors from each kit plus our dominant black and white. We'll run the tests on each of these and compare the results for an average score. The colors I've chosen for the Polychromos test are red, deep scarlet red 219, green, leaf green 112, blue, Thallo Blue 110, Yellow, Cardamom Yellow 107, with the white being white 101 and the black being black 119. How we're going to be doing this test is fairly simple. I'm drawing a color block at five different pressures, 25 gram, 50 gram, 100 gram, 200 gram and 400 grams. So from very light to very heavy, while drawing on a scale to keep them consistent. Keep in mind that the scales come from my kitchen, not a lab, so the numbers might jump around a little bit. Also, for you paper people out there, I'm using a 120 GSM mixed media white paper for these tests. Let's see if these pencils are consistent in their saturation and vibrancy at each of our different pressures. Let's start off these shenanigans with the red pencil at the 25 grams. Now we'll find with most of the 25 grams that it is a very lightweight, so it might be difficult to see some of these colors, but the red has gone down really nice and smooth. Same with the green, the green saturation is looking really nice at the 25 grams. The blue saturation is a little bit more inconsistent. It is still nice and saturated, but I'm finding the pencil a little harder to control. Whereas the yellow, I know yellow pigments are always going to be lighter, but it would be nice if this one was a little bit darker and we could see it better. Now for the black pencil. Now the black pencil is quite saturated and dark, even at this 25 gram weight, which is a great sign. Moving into 50 grams now, what we want to see here is at least a doubling of the saturation at this pressure because 50 is twice 25 grams, you know? So we want it to be nice and saturated compared to our 25 grams. If we have a little squiz at the red, I think the red's doing quite well with a consistent increase of pressure and saturation. The green is very similar and the blue is actually holding its own, not quite as well as the red and the green, but it still looks really nice and saturated here. The yellow, <laughs> 
It's so hard to tell with this yellow because it's not particularly saturated. I think it's gotten higher, but it's hard to tell. And of course, our black. Now the black is remaining consistent with at least a doubling in pressure at our 50 grams. Alrighty, it's time for the 100 grams. And this is how I felt about the 50 grams. We need to double our saturation as we've doubled in pressure. Hopefully we get to see some good results in the 100 grams. If we have a little look at the red here, I feel like that red is at least twice as bright as the 50 grams. So that's a great start there. And then the green I feel is very, very similar. Those two particularly are performing well today. Whereas the blue is, it's gone up in saturation, but it's not quite as much as the green and the red. The yellow, we are actually starting to see the color of the yellow here, which is fantastic. And the black, again, this is a very consistent black. It is stepping up in saturation and vibrancy at each pressure. Okay, we're into the 200 grams now, and this is where I'm starting to feel like things should start moving into their own and really starting to perform. I think the red here is doing a really fantastic job at maintaining its saturation to vibrancy ratio as it's going up in pressure, which is great to see. The green is very similar to the red, really keeping up there with the great saturation. The blue is starting to come into its own around the 200 gram mark, which is wonderful to see. And the yellow is starting to become really vibrant. It seems like the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils come into their own about the 200 gram mark. Our final weight is 400 grams, and this is the heaviest weight that we're going to be going to today. This is the last chance for our pencils to shine. If they don't do what they're supposed to do and be beautiful and saturated and vibrant at this weight, then there's really no hope for them. However, the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils are stunning at this weight. I mean, it's not very likely that you would be drawing at 400 grams all the time, but the saturation and vibrancy really has ticked up and gone at least twice as vibrant and saturated as the 200 grams, which is exactly what we want to see. And if we have a little look at the Faber-Castell Polychromos colors here, we can see that they are super saturated and super vibrant at this 400 gram weight. Okay, we're gonna do a quick little test on our white pencil now, starting exactly the same way. We're going to start out at 25 grams. And the white pencil isn't too bad here. It's not super bright at the 25 grams, but it's really what you would expect for a 25 gram weight. Next, we have the 50. I'm seeing here that the white isn't a particularly vibrant white, but perhaps that's okay. And maybe it gets a bit more vibrant the heavier that we go. Yes, we can definitely see with the 100 gram that we are starting to get quite vibrant now. And particularly when we move into the 200 grams, this seems like where the white is really coming into itself for the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Wow, the 400 grams in the white is very vibrant and very consistent. So that was the saturation and vibrancy test, and it was pretty interesting. I'm very happy with how Polychromos has performed here. The consistent step up over each of the different weights is really obvious to see when we look at the final overall comparison. And to be honest with you, that's what I consider the characteristics of a good pencil. Interestingly, some of the colors perform better than others, the red and green in particular. The red was super consistent with each doubling of pressure, doubling the saturation, and the green wasn't far behind. I don't know if that's because there's a different blend of ingredients of the core or some pigments are softer or harder, or if it was just the batch that I had. The remaining pencils were not far behind these colors. While these are an oil-based core pencil, it doesn't feel like it. A generalization is that most oil-based core pencils can be scratchy and catchy when you draw with them. This wasn't the case with the Polychromos. I felt like I had good control over the pencil and it was very pleasant to use them in this test because no matter whether I was using a light pressure or a heavy, they drew smoothly, comfortably, and importantly, consistently. Okay, it's time to give these pencils a score. I'm using a scoreboard here of 8F with pluses and minuses included and the internet's favorite, 
a big fat S at the top for superb. Each test we do, we're going to average the results and give them a score. Makes sense? Sounds exciting? It is. Looking at how these six colors have performed today and averaging them across this test, I'm going to give the Polychromos a score here of a solid A for saturation and vibrancy. Overall, a very good result for our first pencil, the Polychromos. So this is our big test board. The Polychromos is very lonely at the moment, but as things go along, I'm going to add more pencils to it and it's going to get very interesting. The next test for us is the single pencil gradient. In this test, I draw a gradient from as heavy a weight that is comfortable to as light a weight as I can. This is a pretty standard test for any pencil and that's because it tells us a lot about the characteristics of that pencil and how much control we have over it. How smooth and how controlled the gradient is and how the pencil feels while doing so helps us understand how this pencil is going to perform in real world situations. Let's make some gradients. So I'm starting off nice and intense at the top here and slowly but surely I'm going to be taking off the pressure. Now I do want to do this as carefully as possible because we want this gradient to be as smooth as we possibly can make it. Now whether we can do this as smoothly as possible or whether there's going to be steps in the gradient really depends on how the pencil handles. But the red gradient looks really good. Let's see if our green can maintain that nice smooth gradient. So we're starting off with the full saturation really, really hard and then we're slowly pulling off the pressure and so far so good. We're going into the medium weights A-OK, -okay, but will we be OK with the lighter weights? Slowly, slowly. And this is where we should be hitting about the 25 gram mark, but it's really struggling at that lighter weight. Whether our blue will have exactly the same problem, we're about to find out. There is a little bit of stepping straight away from that heavy weight into the medium weights though, which isn't great. I'm definitely finding it a bit harder to control this blue as we get into the lighter weights. Let's make some time for the yellow. Now yellow can be a little bit tricky to see because it is quite a light pigment, but let's see how this one goes. So the yellow, there is quite a bit of stepping all over the place and it's not doing super well at maintaining that same weight while I pull off the pressure. It keeps going heavier and then lighter again. The black is a similar issue. Like we started off quite smooth into the gradient here. We then started going lighter, but then it went back to heavy, came back to light and went back heavy again. Let's have a look at how the white pencil fares. We're starting out exactly the same way and we want to keep this nice and consistent as we move down into the lighter pressures. I'm finding it's going on smooth and as I pull off the weight, we're making our gradient lighter and lighter. And we see that this actually achieves that 25 gram mark. So our gradients are done and the overall results were pretty positive. Not perfect, but positive. This test is an exercise in working from heavy to light. The easier the pencil is to control as we pull off the pressure, the more tonal differences we can see as we move through different weights. Think of it as smoothly pulling off the accelerator in a car. I struggled a little bit with the polychromos in keeping this smooth transition over the entire gradient. The red and the white looks great and is showing us the full spectrum of pressure, but the other colors are missing that tail end of the gradient approaching the light 25 gram mark. While with the yellow, it is particularly difficult to see those gradual steps in decreased pressure. These pencils are again comfortable to use over a longer period of time and seem to be easier to control in the heavier weights. They don't scratch and they glide on pleasantly. I'd say the pressures around the 100 gram to 200 gram is the polychromos sweet spot. By grading them and then averaging these six pencils together and taking the control issue into consideration, I'm going to give the Faber-Castell Polychromos a score here of B+. That puts them right here on our big scoreboard. We've seen our gradient individually. Now, how do these pencils blend together? For this test, I'm taking our four primary colors, red to green and blue to yellow, and I'm going to blend them together. 
We're going to be paying special attention to what happens at the points where the colours meet. What I'm looking for is a seamless uniting of the two colours into something new and if they will mix together well or just lie on top of each other. To start us off in this test, we are going to be taking our red pencil and we're going to create a gradient. As we know, a gradient is the practice of going from heavy to light pressures and our red gradient actually looks really good. Next, we've got our green and we're going to create a gradient with this too, but we're starting from the bottom and bringing it up to meet the red. If we have a little look in the middle though, this is the most interesting part. We have a smooth blend from one colour to the next and they've blended together relatively well to create this new colour which is kind of a mauve colour. Let's have a look at the blue and the yellow now and the blue is coming down. It's not the smoothest of gradients but it's okay. Let's see what happens at the point where they meet. We've got this beautiful green colour and it's actually quite a nice blend. However, there is a bit of a step off from the blue colour into the yellow but otherwise, it's a really nice blend. Yes, these pencils do blend together very well. The blend from one color to the next is very smooth. They mix together well, which makes the transition between the colors more fluid. But the interesting part in these tests is where the two colors meet. If we have a close look at where they meet in the middle, we can see that while some of the colors are bolder than others, the way they behave towards each other is cooperatively. This means they are blending together. The blend seems effortless as it moves from one colour to the next while also coming together to create something new. Sort of like a green and a mauve. So for our blending test today, I'm going to give our polychromos an A- for an excellent test result. Putting them right here on our empty big scoreboard. Time for the white factor. This is a strange little test I've developed to see how the white interacts with the other pencils. White's a funny pencil. Different people use it for different things and what you see in this test will be likely a result of how you use it. Some people use the white for highlights, others to help blend or lighten areas of a drawing. The way I'm going to do this test is by bringing back in my blending test and shading my white pencil over half of it so we can compare both the whitened parts and the non-whitened parts. So let's see how the white goes. All right, Mr. White Pencil, let's see how we go. Now I'm pushing as hard as I can on this over half of our test so we can compare the results with the non-whitened half. Straight away we can see that the white is definitely having an impact on the red and it's made it almost a pastel pink now, but less so on the green. Let's try the blue and the yellow. Straight away we can see that that white pencil is making our blue really quite pastel. It doesn't seem to be doing all that much in the yellow, but in terms of blending in the center there, it's a much nicer blend now. When I was coming up with these tests, I wasn't certain this one would be that interesting, but you know what? It's actually fascinating to see how much the white has affected the colors. The way the white has lightened the red and the blue is particularly impressive. It's made a real pastel blend on the darks of those colors and smoothed out the middle blend really well. The yellow and the green haven't had as good a result, with the green faring particularly poor. I suspect that polychromos white blending with a colour will be very subjective to each specific individual pencil you use it on. Some will work well, some won't. For that reason, I'm going to rate it a healthy B+. There was more to see in this test than I thought, but I'd like the white to be a little bit stronger. And that puts it here. is the actual pencil barrel to the colour the pencil puts down? It's a big question and a fairly important one. Unless we know a pencil really well, the colour the barrel shows is the easiest and most common way for us to choose that pencil to meet our colour requirements. The way we're going to do this test is simple. We're taking our gradient we prepared earlier and comparing the pencil barrel to it. Using the gradients we prepared earlier, it is such an easy way for us to be able to compare the barrel to the pigment colour. 
Okay, let's get started with our red. And I would say that it's a little bit pinker in the pigment than it is to the barrel color. Whereas that green is stunning and seems to match really, really well. Same with the blue. To my eyes, that yellow is a little bit darker, but it's not bad. And that black's a bit off, but it's okay. Our polychromos are overall pretty decently color matched. To be fair, most of the color matching is coming in at the heavy end, but a match nonetheless. Realistically, the red gradient is a little bit pinker than the pencil with about the same vibrancy, but the green and the blue are very, very close with similar vibrancy and color. The only one that has an obvious difference is the yellow pencil and the yellow gradient, but to be fair, it's not terrible. From my eyes, I think these pencils are pretty close to the color they put down. Again, not perfect, but close nonetheless. I'm going to give Polychromus a score of A. This is really subjective to how our eyes view color, so let me know in the comments below if you think I'm wrong. On our scoreboard, that slots in here. Okay, this is a fun one. How much pressure do we need to put on a pencil before they break? Well, the lead anyway. And why should we care? To me, when you look at a break point in a pencil, it's all about consistency. Does the brand have a consistent mix in their core to get a similar snapping point every single time? This tells me whether they actually care about their pencils and the quality they produce. So how much pressure before these pencils cause break? Let's find out. To make this test as consistent as possible across all the pencils we are going to review, I've set up a couple of controls. I'm going to sharpen each pencil to a point. I'm then going to dull them slightly by drawing three lines at pressure. Basically, this will make sure we don't have a super fine point that will break immediately. I'm then going to be using a 45 degree square to get a consistent angle of pressure. Makes sense? Let's go break some leads. Prepare yourself because things are about to get weird. We're going to start this test off with our red pencil. Let's see how this red performs. Now, I know there's going to be a snap here, but every single time it takes me by surprise. There we go, 627 grams, which is much lighter than I was expecting. I thought these pencils were always really hard, but we'll see what the others look like. So let's try the green now. And as we pop on the pressure, let's see how hard we can go to with this one. 563 grams, that's actually less than the last one. I always thought that the Polychromos were a really hard pencil. Let's have a little look at what our blue has to offer. And we'll set this up right like this and pop on our pressure. Slowly but surely we build it up and then Every time I like clench my teeth, there we go, 575 grams. Interestingly, this is actually quite consistent, even if the numbers are quite low. It's a consistent result. Weirdly, as I'm doing these tests, I am still finding these pencils really comfortable to use. Usually when you're breaking a pencil, you're not thinking about the comfortability of the pencil, but honestly, these ones are so comfortable that it is something that's popping out in my mind. Speaking of popping out, here we go with the yellow. And there we are with the 531 grams. So all these colors, all the colored pigments are really consistent and quite close together in the grand scheme of things. Let's see if the black will maintain that consistency. So we'll set it up and let's put on the pressure. That's already higher than our highest colored pencil. and. Whoa, that got to 1,180 grams. That's over a kilogram of weight. How is that black so much harder than the other colors? All right, let's get over my shock and start with our white and start building up that pressure, which is already heavier than the other colors. And already that's broken at 837 grams. So the black and the white are really going to skew our results today. I love this test. I know destroying pencils is bad, but it's really fun. Anyway, let's look at the results for our Polychromos pencil. Overall, if we aggregate all of the six breaking points, we get a result of 719 grams, which isn't too bad. Again, I'm going to graph these results, but this being our first pencil, it's just sitting there all lonely like. 
719 grams is actually softer than I was expecting. I really thought it would be higher than that, but the numbers don't lie. Now things get a little bit interesting when we check out the consistency of our results. We were pretty close in most pencils and giving a little leeway, I'd say we were pretty excellent, but that black, what on earth is with that black? 1,180 grams for the black versus the lowest being the yellow at 531 grams is a vast difference. I'm not sure if that's intentional or a bad batch or just random bad luck, but that black sucked for consistency. For you naysayers out there, I did this test with the polychromos a few times and the results were pretty much the same. That black is just super hard. Anyway, unfortunately, that's going to drop the polychromos' result down a few marks on our scale to a still respectable B. And that puts them here. test. Do these pencils spark joy or do they cause despair? This test is purely based upon the vibe I've gotten from these pencils as I've been reviewing them. I love the look of these pencils and the feel of these pencils. The diameter, weight and design is all very ergonomic and streamlined. They are very comfortable pencils. I love the sleekness, the elegance and the simplicity of the engraved gold branding and details. I love the consistency of the colour to the barrel and the fact that the barrel colour goes from end to end. It's hard to pick up the wrong pencil by mistake with the polychromos. I do feel that the elegance is suffering a little with the sheer amount of stuff printed on the sides, particularly now that they've added the barcode to the pencil's barrel. To me this feels cheap and it takes away from the professional vibe that the pencils had before it was added. Give me a clean, elegant pencil any day rather than something covered in stuff. Performance wise, I know these pencils, so to be fair, I haven't been overly surprised with them. But I know them because I like how they perform. Saturation, vibrancy and blending are all excellent. I was a little surprised they didn't do better in the straight gradient test. I never really realised how temperamental they are at the lighter weights. I wasn't expecting anything in the white test, but I was pleasantly surprised at how well these pencils did. One thing I like about the polychromos is the consistency, and I think I saw why in the break test. The leads were very consistent in how they broke, and that felt to me like a sign of a good pencil. I'm going to say yes. Yes, these pencils spark joy. Anyway, let's have a look at the A to F scale, with S being superb, of course, and give them a score. In my spark joy factor, the Faber-Castell polychromos pencils spark much joy. So I am giving them an A in this area. That puts them right here. Okay, so this is the most exciting part of this video. It's time to give an overall score for the Faber-Castell polychromos. I'm going to aggregate all of the scores together and get a total for these pencils. And that total is an A minus. Nice work, Faber-Castell polychromos. And that's gonna put our polychromos on the big scoreboard right about here. This isn't at all impressive right now, but I can't wait to see what it looks like with other pencils on here. So that's it. I hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comments if there are tests that you would have liked to see or if you simply just didn't agree with my results. I'm going to keep adding to our pencil reviews and make those graphs look a little bit less lonely. So check back next week to see how our next pencil compares to the polychromos. Speaking of which, next week, this pencil is direct from Japan. The very beautiful Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil. If in the meantime you want to chat and hang out, I'm on Twitch most days, otherwise there are a ton of links below for all the other social stuff. That's it everybody, have a wonderful day, I'll talk to you soon. Bye!